Just like many of you, I've been eagerly awaiting the new Netflix adaptation of Avatar. So much so that I was willing to go ahead and drop £40 on the best video game adaptation the series has seen so far. And no, I'm not talking about the Wii entries that are over 10 years old. I'm talking about the 2023 fresh and brand new adaptation by the GOATs over at Game Mill Entertainment. You know, the ones responsible for Kong and The Walking Dead. Earning the Platinum Trophy for this game will finally free me from the weird enjoyment I get from playing bad games. But will I actually succeed or will there be too many glitches standing in the way leaving me stuck with an unobtained platinum trophy well i guess you'll have to see as we enter the third and hopefully final part of what i would like to call the game mill trilogy Now, I wish I could say I was shocked by the cutscenes in this game, but after sitting through the PNG cutscenes in both The Walking Dead and Kong, I was kind of expecting something similar to happen here as well. The art style does make these cutscenes a bit more bearable, but for the most part, it was still the same slideshow nonsense with pieced together storylines that made absolutely zero sense. Kicking things off, we are chucked into the tutorial area to get the grips for the controls of the game. And I mean, just look how amazing this game looks compared to something like Red Dead Redemption 2 that is £17 on the PlayStation Store. I also noticed pretty early on that the game doesn't have any dialogue whatsoever except for a few specific boss fights later into the game. This left me reading countless text prompts while the characters made random sounds like Yes! After getting to grips with the incredible combat, I pressed forward until earning my first trophy of the game for completing the tutorial section. First trophy already, nice. I very quickly learned that this game is split into three books, Water, Earth and Fire. These serve as acts and relate to the bending skill we learn during that book. The main problem I have with this though is that the game doesn't make any effort to give you these skills in some cool or unique way. Instead, we are just told that the power to bend fire is now at our disposal and that's that. The entire plot of this game is also summed up in a similar sort of way. 99% of the time, anything that is of actual importance is shown to us in a lovely little paragraph. The best example of this is is about halfway through the game where we are completing one of the many bending challenges stuck in our way. All is good, I collect the chest and head out of the challenge before the game smacks me with the news that Aang has all of a sudden been captured by the Fire Nation. No cutscene, no real indication that the Fire Nation was even after Aang in the first place, just a nice little paragraph to keep me up to speed. This is pretty much why I've chosen to leave the story out of this video because truthfully it's bad and it's betrayed in a way that I honestly couldn't even begin to explain to you all without getting confused myself. To start this amazing journey off though, we are introduced to Aang and Katara. Aang is able to use air bending and Katara is a water bending master. We begin this section melting ice walls and grabbing a few chests before heading into this puzzle room to see Aang trying his best to get out of this mess. Why is he just... <laughs> Now, I just want to be clear that not everything in this game is bad because there is one single feature in this game that I truly did enjoy, and that would be the bending challenges. These are easily the best feature in this game, and I really did love every single one. Each challenge is a completely different puzzle to do, with three puzzles to complete before the end of the challenge. You have two chests also randomly placed, with one of them being hidden in a wall or requiring an extra puzzle to reach. I also just love the fact that the game makes sure all three characters in your squad are being used for the puzzle that you are completing. However, it's pretty much downhill from here because we are quickly thrown into our first race. Before we do this though, I just want to quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Filmora. I'm more than sure a lot of you have felt the difficulties of finding background music for your content that doesn't contain copyright to some extent. I mean, even I've had to search all over the internet to find out exactly what is and what isn't usable within my videos. But with the sponsor of today's video, Filmora's newest update has fixed this issue with the addition of their AI music generator. This feature is definitely worth trying out as you have a choice of up to 24 different moods, themes and genres to really hone in on that specific sound you desire for your content. This update also includes a new text-to-speech feature, taking the words that you type and turning them into speech all within a quick few seconds. Just walk down here and yes, we finally got the trophy. And finally, a bunch of Valentine-themed stickers, transitions, and stock media have also been added, allowing you to express your love towards the people you love. Be sure to download Filmora for free today to try out these effects for a limited time and receive up to 20% off the annual plan. Thank you, Filmora, for supporting the channel, and let's get back to the video. The races in this game let off a very strong Subway Surfers vibe, which makes sense given the fact that The Walking Dead also took heavy inspiration from the Telltale games. There's a trophy tied to these races that requires you to earn over 75% of the coins in every single race. Made it! 
What is the purpose of that though? Like. Yeah! Now that the first race was over, we're introduced to the combat system. And honestly, what did you really expect? The combat here is probably the worst I've seen from a game mode game this far. The enemies are able to stun lock you once you're on the ground because the devs didn't think about putting a cooldown on the enemy moves. And while in this situation, the ability to switch characters is also unavailable because you're actively taking damage. Spamming the attack button also soft locks your character to only attack in that direction, which makes absolutely no sense. And to combat this, the game gives you a lock on option to target that specific enemy without any issues. This would be great if the lock-on feature actually worked, but instead it just locks on to any random enemy and you have to cycle through the enemies to get to the correct one. I think it's safe to say that the lock-on feature was added as a way to make the combat more bearable, but actually ended up just making it a lot worse. Taking all of these issues and putting them to the side for now though, I did manage to airlift 20 enemies for a trophy. Oh, airlift, that's a trophy for launching 20 enemies. Before starting the next trophy, for beating the first three bosses without getting hit. I'm not going to sit here and say this is impossible because it was far from it, but it eventually dawned on me that while inside the boss fights, the lock on feature is unusable. You know, the one thing that made the combat semi useful. So most of the fights resulted in me just running around and dodging attacks because there really wasn't much else I could do. While slowly working on these three boss fights, I managed to knock out a few miscellaneous trophies along the way. I destroyed this guy's cabbage cart 10 times in a row. Use Socket Boomerang to eliminate an enemy. Use Katara to heal another player. And also buy a bending scroll from the shop. These bending scrolls are actually pretty useful. And what I didn't realize at the time was that these were also extremely buggy. They used to upgrade a core skill, like an attack or an ability, and they can be purchased in shops or earned through story-related missions. However, it is possible for these scrolls to become glitched, and the mission to reward you with absolutely nothing. At the time, I had no clue this was even a possible outcome, so I continued to play through the story and eventually approached the second boss fight. This fight is against Zuko once again, and it became pretty clear that they just copied the boss fight over, adding a few enemies every once in a while to change things up a bit. I can't really say why this is, but since I'd beaten once already, it was extremely easy to take him down and move on to boss 3. I really don't understand the lore behind this entire mission and I do want to mention that this was really the turning point in the game when it came to my attention span. I just got so bored of the random characters being introduced out of nowhere with seemingly no context or just the story not adding up whatsoever. It became blatantly clear that the devs just gave up when the third boss just spawns in, chilling in the back corner of the map and only initiates the boss fight once you calmly approach it and say yes. Hey boy, listen to me. Oh, a voice actor. Not in the mood to talk, I guess. Why is that just randomly voice acting? <laughs> I spent all their budget on this like one boss fight. This boss fight did free me from the Zuko trap I was once in and honestly might have been one of the best fights in the game. There's three structures that you need to destroy and you're required to push the boxes around this puzzle style environment to eventually slam it into the structure. Do this three times and the boss falls earning me that lovely trophy. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> trophy please, please. Yes. Okay. That was one I, I was kind of scared that, I was, that one was going to bug actually, but we did it, we did it. Before attempting the trophy put out the fire, I want to quickly touch on the combat once again, specifically the trap mechanic. This is a move that Katara uses to trap the enemies with an ice attack, holding them in place and making it a pretty fast way to eliminate the enemies. The main issue with this move though, <laughs> is that it just doesn't work. The move is bound to the triangle button and no matter how many times I push triangle, nothing happened. I reset the game, the console, changed the controller and even checked the settings just to make sure I was actually pressing the correct button. But genuinely nothing was working. I was under the assumption that maybe the move was just completely broken and not even in the game but this was quickly dismissed once I realized that after the AI takes control of Katara it is possible for her to use the move without any issues so I guess I was just locked out of this trophy. After looking around on a few reddit posts and finding absolutely nothing because no one's played this game I searched it up on YouTube and found a video posted by Aaron Duke Gaming who explained that this issue was also present in their playthrough too. The fix that was suggested is to to literally upgrade the trap skill using a scroll to hopefully allow the base move to become usable. Say I, didn't warn you. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. They should watch their step. Trap 20 enemies. 
With that stress finally over and the platinum back on track, we can return to the trophy, put out the fire. This is for beating Admiral Zao. Zao, I'm not too sure. And from what I could gather, this guy is just mad at Zuko for freeing Aang from the Fire Nation. I managed to cheese this fight relatively early on, as I figured out that standing on these ice pillars makes you pretty much invincible. You can't. Take my hand! Aang, along with the spirit of the ocean, saved us all that day. Iroh is a traitor, and your brother is a failure. I have a task. With this guy now defeated, we can head into book two, which starts the earthbending journey. This introduces us to Toph, an earthbending prodigy whose sole purpose is to take us along the earthbending path. And luckily for us, Toph has access to the seismic ability, which unlocks a trophy after its first use. The seismic ability is actually pretty cool, but is linked to another trophy called Investigation Bender that requires you to find all secret rooms in the game. I didn't realize at this point, but there had also been secret rooms leading up to this point as well that didn't need her ability to be found. But the icing on the cake is that the game makes no effort to track these secret rooms. No pop-up when found, no tracker in the menus, and no real indication the secret room is even there, other than the possibility of uncovering one when using Toph's ability. It seemed that from this point on, the Investigation bender trophy was genuinely just down to luck and i didn't know how much more luck i truly have in this game i couldn't really sit and dwell on this for too long though as i was quickly chucked into another battle giving me the perfect opportunity to block 20 projectiles with the shield This was also around the same time that I found myself playing as Zuko once again and by selecting two player co-op grabbed myself a very easy trophy I feel like this has to be an easter egg or something referenced in the series because it feels kind of random that this trophy only works with these two specific characters. So if you're a fan of the series, please let me know. From this point on, the entirety of the earth book was practically the same stuff already seen in the water book. We do a few bending challenges, collect a few chests, complete a few races, and even experience the odd story twist like defeating Zuko for the 100th time since he decided to join the Fire Nation again with his sister Azula. This entire cutscene makes absolutely zero sense, and we are never really told exactly what state Aang is in, whether he's alive, or what even happened after this. Instead, we are chucked into the last book of the game and end up at the Fire Mountain City. I think it's probably a good time to mention the side quests within this game. There's usually around four per mission, mostly consisting of mundane tasks that honestly just make the levels longer for no reason. Completing every single quest does result in a trophy, but I'd be saving that for the post-game cleanup. For now, I can grab a few chests around this area before heading into the Fire Nation bunker. On the way there, I collected more than 75% of the coins within this last race to finally finish up all the races. We made it, buddy! And then got another trophy for interacting with 20 different objects in the world. This trophy is a bit misleading because it's not actually 20 random objects, it's just these things on the ground that you can use your special ability on. We eventually reach the bunker and this is supposedly where the Fire Lord is located, but I bet you can't guess who we run into instead. Oh great, Azula and the Dai Li! That's right, Azula is once again standing in our way and posed absolutely zero threat because I had already defeated her like six times at this point. With the area deemed unsafe, we are taken to the Western Air Temple, which is honestly my favorite section in the game. It's pretty much just an entire level of puzzles and some of these puzzles are required to be completed post game. I cleared up what I could within this first visit and eventually used Toph to break all the walls around the level, leading to a fight with the Combustion Man. Everything leading up to this fight had just been the same boring repetitive fights between between Zuko and Azula, but this single fight with the Combustion Man was way different. You need to use Zuko to burn these vines, Aang to lift the rocks, and then Sokka to boomerang his lifeless body. 
the fact that you actually have to use all three characters here just shows that there was at least some people on the dev team that actually wanted this game to be enjoyable. After doing this three times, Combustion Man falls and Zuko makes a pretty major revelation. No longer would he keep switching sides and betraying our trust, but he would actually fight alongside us to win this war against the Fire Nation. We start a riot in this Fire Nation prison, freeing Sokka's girlfriend and capturing the warden. Well, I say capturing, but the most I actually got to see was this. The riot Sokka plan worked, and they were close to escaping with the warden as their hostage. And luckily for me, what awaited me at the end of this paragraph was another amazing fight with Azula. I mean, at this point, just give me a free win and I'll be on my way. The fight yet again used the exact same moveset as before, with the only difference this time being that Sokka needed to hit the generators with his boomerang in order to stun Azula for a few hits. I honestly don't understand why these fights even happen, because each and every time we fight, she just stays alive at the end anyways, making this a pretty pointless situation. Then it's time to leave. After this, Aang runs away to a random island for some reason, and it is here that a trophy is meant to pop for learning all four bending arts. It is also pretty close to here that I unlocked the trophy, the whole gang's here, which is actually a pretty cool play on words. This is for unlocking every character in the game, which I'm pretty sure is unmissable. Just to save some time, the entire section with Iroh and Bami is relatively pointless and just has us protecting a village from harm. Once beating all the enemies, this cutscene plays with Aang and a wise turtle before Aang disappears and we are chucked onto a ship as Sokka with literally no context whatsoever. I was so lost during this section because it truly makes no sense why we are even here except for the fact that we needed to head to the control room. Now, after defeating all the enemies, finding the control room and then protecting the altitude controls up on the roof, Please place your bets as to who we run into because I could guarantee you're about to be a millionaire. Luckily, this was actually the final fight and I was over the moon. I did the same repetitive three stage fight before tying her up and watching her go insane trying to freeze me. We did it. Despite all she's done, I feel sorry. For her. And then, yeah, we just jump straight into a fight with Fire Lord Ozai, the literal final boss of the game. I really did like this fight as much as I've been hating on this game so far, because the final fight merged pretty much everything I had learned into one fight. It's like the entire buildup of fighting Azula and Zuko over and over again was to prepare me for this fight with Ozai. The first stage was more of a waiting game than anything else, as he just jumps around these platforms before running out of breath for me to get a few hits in. Do this three times and we are chucked into the second part of the fight, where we need to hit these rocks towards the Fire Lord. I got pretty curious as to why we are even fighting this guy in the first place, so I had a look on the wiki, which let me know that Fire Lord Ozai is actually Zuko's father. Apparently, they had a fight and Ozai burned Zuko's face, banishing him from the Fire Nation until he captured the long lost avatar. Suddenly, a lot of the story actually made a lot of sense and all it took was one single look at the wiki so thanks game once the second phase of the fight was over we we're chucked into the third part which uses fire bending to deflect this electrical ability i'm not sure which bending skill this comes under to be honest but i would assume that fire lord ozai is a very advanced fire bender and that would be why that he can use moves that i can't you can't take my power you can't Now that anger descended past anything I ever expected, I've reached the final part of this fight. One that, in my opinion, is completely useless and a big waste of time. I don't really know what happened for Aang to get so powerful, but I'm under the assumption that he is using all of the bending skills at once. This makes him invincible and therefore, I'm just running around after Ozai, trying to eliminate him while he avoids all of my attacks. He's gotta be dead soon, surely. No. There you go. You the Fire Lord power. is finished. You can't. 
and your journey's end. That's a complete in the game. No, I'm not going to end it like this. Even with all the power in the world, you are still weak. In the era before the Avatar, we bent not the elements, but the energy within ourselves. What? What did you do to me? I took away your firebending. You can't use it to hurt or threaten anyone else ever again. And with one of the only true in-game cutscenes coming to a close, the game was over and the cleanup run can begin. Starting with the trophy, you call that a challenge, where we have to beat every single spirit trial in the game. These had been progressively unlocked throughout the game. Simple things like beating a race with no checkpoints, destroying objectives within a certain amount of time, and beating bandits using only certain abilities or attacks. These were all relatively easy to complete, and I was under the impression that this trophy would pose no issues, until I reached spirit trial 9. I don't understand what the devs were thinking when they made this trial and I'm seriously under the impression that no one in the team tested this before its release. The basic combat of this trial is to defend a civilian for 60 seconds. Pretty easy stuff right? Well no. These bigger enemies can eliminate the civilian in a solid 5 seconds so I have to sit here trying to take them down doing absolutely no damage to their health since the game decided to give all these enemies an upgraded health bar. Not only that but defeating the first large enemy just spawns in more of them that insta kill the civilian since her attacks do so much damage. Without even worrying about these big guys though, there's also the other enemies wielding a bow and arrow. I tried over and over and over again, losing a few hours to this stupidly designed trial before taking a break to check if anyone had another method at this trial. I eventually found a forum on PSN profiles that explained that you can go into free roam, load up on food and then head back into the trials to pretty much stay invincible with the unlimited health you have. I would assume that this was never an intended feature from the developers, and I genuinely believe this trial is impossible without doing this. Now we can just keep we can just keep eating these things on the side to regen our health, so should be good until 15 seconds and then I just gotta stall that one guy. One big guy and then we should be good. Please, 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 please. I don't wanna do this again, man. I really don't wanna do this again. Fucking hell, man. With arguably the hardest thing I've had to face in this game now out of the way, the remainder of these spirit trials posed no real threat, and I eventually earned the trophy for completing every single one. Go. You call that a challenge. And now, the real cleanup of this game can begin. With the story complete, the only option left is free mode, and this allows us to go through all the levels again, grabbing everything we've missed. The trophies, later Momo, Statuesque, Beat All Side Quests, Investigation Bender, and Master Treasure Hunter were all progressively earned throughout this final cleanup of the game. And do you want to know exactly how I tracked these trophies? On this very informative spreadsheet. Now, I wouldn't have to do this if the game just tracked your progress properly and actually displayed everything you were collected in detail. But of course, it doesn't. The game for some reason states that you've 100%ed a level before actually 100%ing that level. There's no statue tracker and there's no tracker for the extra chest that spawns in when you do all the side quests on the level. This basically left me with no other choice than to track all this stuff on my own. And honestly, I would not have been able to do this at all without the help of the user Black and Green on PSN profiles, who posted every chest location in the game out of the kindness of their own heart. Absolute goat, and I cannot thank you enough. With this tracker at my disposal, I headed into free roam to start this cleanup grind. Every so often, you run into this little guy called Momo, who challenges you to a race. There's only a handful of these, and honestly, they're super easy, since Momo doesn't really fly that fast. So after finding and completing every single one with ease, I soon earned the trophy. Might be the trophy, I don't know. There you go. Since free roam luckily saves everything you had done in the main story, there wasn't a lot of statues left to uncover, since I had tried my hardest to find them all in my first playthrough. Oh, yeah! But what really took the most amount of mind-numbing collectible grinding was definitely the side quests and chests. These quests are started by finding people hidden around the map, doing a very mundane task and then receiving some upgrade points for completing said side mission. I don't know for sure how many there were in the game, but I would assume it was above 50. And after completing all the side quests in a level, a bonus chest will pop, which of course 
brings me onto the chests. These chests are scattered all over the game. Usually there's two to four chests per level with two in every bending challenge as well, resulting in a whopping 177 chests to collect throughout this game. I don't know what smart person over on the dev team decided to put that many collectibles without a proper tracking system, but I luckily had black and green to save the day. I grinded for what felt like hours upon hours, just collecting these hidden chests before finally it was over. Okay, it is, it's very possible that this might be the last chest. Um, and if it is, this one guy that I've been using, the fucking major props, man, because I would have absolutely no clue what I'm doing. There we go, master treasure hunter. With everything out of the way, you might be wondering what happened to the Investigation Bender trophy. And well, it didn't pop. I had no clue what I had missed and I didn't even know where to look or where to even start. I just put 50 solid hours into getting this platinum. And at this point, I was willing to end it here so I never have to touch this game again. But some weird voice in the back of my head wanted to see me earn that platinum trophy. So I searched through a few levels of the game, trying to remember anything that I could have skipped over during the story mode until it hit me. One of the final levels in the game Game had an ice wall that I couldn't melt because I had the incorrect characters at the time. Hoping this would be the last one I needed, I loaded up the mission and headed over to see if I was in luck or if I'd have to play through the entire game again. This could be the trophy. Uh, this could not be the trophy, pretty much. There we go. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that that was the last thing, man. I, I don't want to go through the whole game again to find it. The platinum was far from over though, because there was still one trophy standing in the way called Positively Perky. This is for upgrading every skill for every character in the game, and this can be glitched if the scrolls are not rewarded where intended. Luckily, everything went pretty smooth for me on this playthrough, but after doing every main mission, side quest, chest, bending challenge, and even all the spirit trials, I still did not have enough upgrade points to fully upgrade all my characters. And this led me to assume my game was well and truly glitched. I mean, what kind of game has you 100% everything and then still not give you the correct amount of skill points to upgrade all of your characters for a trophy. It confused me for a while, I must admit, but I eventually figured out that replaying certain fight encounters over and over again does indeed give you these skill points as a reward, albeit one single skill point at a time. So after replaying the same fight over and over and over again, it was finally time to upgrade the last skill. Okay, I believe if I haven't missed anything, this should be the trophy. We will see for sure, but... There we go. Positively perky. With every character now upgraded, the final trophy for the Platinum was a piece of cake. Pumped up punishment requires you to beat a boss while Aang is fully upgraded. And I thought it was only fit to go back and fight Zuko one last time to end this Platinum off right where it started. There we go. That should be the Platinum, I think. Lovely stuff. Avatar State. Avatar A Quest for Balance will go down as probably the most boring yet kind of fun golem-like game that I have ever played. The bending challenges were probably the best and only thing that kept me going throughout this game and without that I'm actually not sure I would have gotten past this. I hope you all enjoyed this video, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye!